Okay, we're now recording. So welcome to a UNCG Libraries Research and Application Webinar on Lateral Reading by our um, Information Literacy Coordinator, Jenny Dale. And uh, Jenny, you can take over now. I'm having a lot of trouble with my mute and unmute button today, but um, I'm just going to play through that uh, pain. So yes, thank you so much, Sam, and thank you all for joining me today. I'm really excited to be talking to you about lateral reading. I'll introduce myself a little bit further. Um, so I'm Jenny Dale, as Sam said, I use she, her pronouns, and I am the Information Literacy Coordinator. Um, here at UNCG Libraries, and I'm also a liaison to five departments, Classical Studies, Communication Studies, English, Media Studies, and Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies. And one of the reasons I point that out is that I have actually done um, some of the ac some activities that are similar to what I'll be sharing with you today in most, or maybe now actually, and I'm looking at it, I think all of these departments, um, I've used lateral reading activities in different class sessions, um, uh, as well as beyond these departments. So I would love for y'all to, in the Zoom chat, share your department or program that you're in or where you work on campus. Um, I will be using the chat to share links and there will be a point at which um, there is um, an activity where you'll use the chat. All right, we've got Anna. Thank you, Anna, welcome. Got Anna, who's a librarian. Sam, also a librarian. I too am a librarian. Libraries are, are well represented here, 50%. No, actually, I guess more than 50%. And Paige, thank you from Public Health Education. I think lateral reading is really a good strategy to know um, for public health folks. So I'm glad you're here. And if y'all want to just kind of keep adding to that list, I'll move ahead um, and start talking, but I would love to hear from you in that chat. So what is it? I just wanted to just dive right in um, because this is a pretty short webinar. Um, so lateral reading um, is the term is from Sam Weinberg, who is an education and history professor at Stanford. Um, and one of the really important things um, that Sam Weinberg has done is to found and be the executive director of the Stanford History Education Group, or SHEG, you'll sometimes see it. And this is actually a group that's gotten um, some pretty decent news coverage over the past few years, particularly related to fake news and information evaluation. Um, they do these sort of um, reports about, a lot of times they call it like uh, online civic engagement or civic reasoning. Um, and a lot of that actually relates to um, evaluating sources that you find online in the context of being, you know, an active citizen. Um, and he also is affiliated and was a founder of Stanford's PhD program in history education. And Weinberg and some of his colleagues at Stanford um, have done a good bit of research about how people um, how people search for information and then how they sort of evaluate and determine what uh, sources are reputable or reliable and then also how fact checkers kind of check claims um, compared to other groups. Um, so one of the studies which I have, a, I'm, I'm going to give links to both these slides and to a little resource list um, and on that resource list I have a link to a preprint. One of those studies which I found really interesting is what got me pretty interested in lateral reading um, was a study where um, Stanford students, Stanford undergraduate students were compared with history PhDs and with professional fact checkers. So they compared all those groups in the study. They had them look at some websites and sort of compare two at a time to determine which one would be considered more reliable. And what they found was that the professional fact checkers were right pretty much 100% of the time and that the um, the PhD historians and the Stanford students were wrong a great deal of the time in terms of that reliability or, or, or whether or not a website is something we might consider problematic or overly biased. Um, and one of the big things that these fact checkers did, they noted in the study, was what they call lateral reading. Um, and we will talk a little bit more about what this means, but I'm actually going to share, and let me make sure I've got my I'm going to have my computer sound on because I have a little video clip um, that I'm going to share and I will also make this available after and it should have captions as well in case there's any um, issues with the sound but this is from uh, just a clip from a video about lateral reading from a crash course series um, that's um, featuring John Green the author um, so I will play this it's about a minute 
what you're not. The Stop City Funded Internet campaign is a good example of what I mean. So in early 2018, the city of West Plains, Missouri was working on a taxpayer funded municipal internet service project. If successful, it would provide residents with cheaper high speed internet. And while the city was working on this plan, a website for the Stop City Funded Internet campaign popped up. It claimed to be a grassroots community of local fiscal conservatives against the plan. The campaign site looked pretty sleek and professionally designed. It had a clear stated mission and high quality photography. Oh, and also a list of all the ways that municipal internet service projects have failed. And just by looking at the website, you would not be able to tell who was really behind that campaign because it didn't name names or list its leadership. But in the end, someone did discover the brains behind the operation. It was, of course, Fidelity Communications, a local commercial internet provider that didn't want to lose customers. And the only reason they came clean was because a Missouri man noticed the file name of the site's logo had fidelity in it. But most of the time, we don't need to search source code to know more about who's sharing the information that we're consuming. We just need to learn to read differently. So we tend to read websites like we read books or articles. We start at the top of the page, look at the title, and scroll down from there. We read vertically. And many websites look legitimate when you're reading vertically because you're only seeing what their creators want you to see. And creators know what we think makes websites look authoritative. A well-designed logo, references and citations, professional photography, no grammatical errors or typos. And so when you read vertically, it is often impossible to distinguish reliable information from unreliable. But introducing other strategies into your reading, like looking elsewhere for additional information, can help you find out a lot more. When you're on a new website, instead of staying put and taking their word for it, you should just leave. Open a new tab and start looking for more information. That's called lateral reading. It's lateral because instead of moving up and down, you're moving from tab to tab. Basically, what I'm saying is that when your browser looks like this, it, it can actually be good news. Like here's a web. All right, so that little clip, um, and again, I will share the full video with y'all, but um, I think that does a good job of distinguishing between lateral and vertical reading. Both of these kinds of reading are important for source evaluation, um, but lateral reading is probably um, the one we are less likely to do unless we sort of make a specific effort to do so. Um, so we're actually gonna do a little breakout room activity um, where we compare what lateral and vertical reading look like. Um, and this is an activity that I will set up in Zoom breakout rooms. You will be put randomly into a breakout room. Um, in the chat here, let's pull it up. Okay, come on, come on chat, it's hiding. Um, okay, I'm gonna put the link, the go link to the Google Drive folder. So. I'll tell you what we're gonna do, and then I'll take you to the Google Drive folder, and then I'll put you in those groups. This is a very low key kind of activity, so it's not something um, that uh, you're gonna to have to put a lot of effort into or, or stress too much about. Um, but this is a, a very shortened version of an activity I did with a Spanish class um, that had me come in to talk about lateral reading. Um, so I'm gonna click on the link here, it should take you to an open Google Drive folder that has two documents in it, one breakout room one and one breakout room two. If you haven't used Zoom breakout rooms, um, the breakout room number will be in the top left of your screen. Um, and when we are using these breakout rooms, room one will be doing vertical reading. And basically what I've done here is I have given you kind of a starting point. And the vertical reading group will look at, skim the article, skim is important here because we're only gonna have about five minutes. Um, this is a recent article from immigrationimpact.com um, about uh, President Trump uh, and his outgoing sort of final efforts related to immigration and refugees. So you'll just do a quick skim of it. And then in your breakout room group, um, there are two questions below for y'all to answer. So you'll talk to each other. You can definitely um, just elect a recorder if you wanna do that. So there's only one person um, editing this document, but these documents are fully editable. 
So you'll just go into the one assigned to your group. Um, and then you can just jot down ideas or notes or thoughts or links or, or whatever based on the questions that I have here for you. So this is kind of a guided lateral reading activity. It's not pure, like just go out and investigate and find out what you can, like what, what John Green was sort of showing us in that video. This is a little bit more guided so you can get a sense of how I would introduce this concept to students. Um, so with that, I am going to stop sharing for a moment. Um, and because we're going into breakout rooms, I'm also going to pause the recording. So Sam mentioned in the chat that, that Jean Page, we're just starting to talk about bias. Um, and uh, bias is a very, it's a complex topic. We, we think of it, I think, in terms of black and white, it's biased or it's not. And we also often think biased is bad, unbiased is good, um, but it's of course much more sort of complicated than that. And that's a great conversation that students do get into when I do activities like this. Um, I gave y'all a pretty short time frame to do this and sort of fewer questions, um, but typically this would be like, I'd give groups at least like four questions and like 15 minutes to work together. Um, and in an ideal situation, like the last time I did this, uh, or the time I did this most recently was with a Spanish class, as I mentioned, um, and I gave them, I was embedded in their Canvas course, so I gave them a link to an article to read ahead of time. So they had all read the same sort of initial source, like that immigration impact article. Um, so let me reshare my slides so that we can talk more. Okay. So um, just any quick share outs here. Um, my, I had, we had one group that read vertically and one that read laterally. Um, so are uh, anybody from either of those groups interested in um, either in the chat or just unmuting and sharing uh, like something you noticed or something that you learned about the, about the original source? So Paige and I did the um, vertical one. Um, and uh, in the time period we had, you know, we checked the link and then we uh, found the about page. The link that we clicked on did have, um, it backed up what they were saying. It was a New York Times article that talked about previous injunctions um, about immigration um, resettlement, right? And then um, the about page, like, uh, was, you know, showed that they're a part of a project that is focused on um, advocating for immigration resettlement. So that's when we had just kind of started talking about bias and how students have a lot of, um, it's complicated to talk to students about bias. And Paige had just asked me like, how do we define bias with students? Um, and then we were sent back here. So again, it's a complicated, and you, you talked about that. Um, so that's, so we didn't really have time to really like delve into like, oh, do we really feel like reading vertically made us tr trust, I, I put, I'm putting tr trust in quotation marks right now, because, you know, like, would we use this as a citation? Um, yeah, and then Anna said, yeah, the American Immigration Lawyers Association is the parent organization, yeah. So um, that is where we got vertical reading. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, bias is a big question that comes up in vertical reading. A lot of groups um, that might host websites or might, you know, have a site like this or put up information like this are going to be less forthcoming about some of this information than this particular example. One of the reasons I like using this one is because it's not um, it's kind of ideal in the sense that they do give you like who, what, what, like Anna said, they're a subgroup of a subgroup of another group, but they, they do help you kind of trace that lineage a little bit. Um, but it's also, I think, a good example because it is biased. There is bias here. There's really, to me, no question about it. They are very clear about sort of who they are and what they believe in, and that is certainly going to impact um, where they, where they come from. So I think the, the, potential issue can be if you are a student and you're not familiar with an issue, for example, not just a student, anyone, and you're reading just vertically, um, you may not necessarily understand the implications or degrees of those biases. Um, and so reading vertically is really important. And I want to, to reiterate that, especially for source evaluation. 
Um, but when you're reading vertically, even if you're clicking lots of links and seeing sort of where they send you out to, um, like John Green said in that video, they're in control. The website creator is ab in absolute control of what they're like what they're saying and what they're showing you. So one of the things that can happen when you read laterally is that you get some outside perspectives. Um, and so when you read laterally, you get to see what other people have said or what other organizations have said about this organization. Um, and so let me go to my next one here. So Mike Caulfield, who has written a fantastic OER textbook called Web Literacy for Student Fact Checkers, um, he talks quite a bit about lateral reading um, in that. And again, this will be on the resource list that I give you. Um, so lateral reading helps the reader understand both the perspective from which the site's analyses come and if the site has an editorial process for expert reputation that would allow one to accept the truth of a site's facts. So lateral reading is what I would recommend, especially if you are uh, introduced to a brand new source that you're trying to evaluate. Um, I would recommend lateral reading first. Who, you know, and you can lateral read about a source, you can lateral read about an author, an organization, um, but you can kind of do that first and that can help save you time. So what happened in this, the Sam Weinberg study that I mentioned is that there are two sort of competing um, associations of, uh, for pediatricians. Um, and one of them is sort of a larger and more long-term and respected organization. And one has, uh, one rose out of sort of um, being against uh, adoption by same-sex couples. So they both sort of, they sound similar, their names are very close, they both have nice websites, um, and one of the reasons that if you're if you're just looking at one and, and, and you're going vertically and you're not necessarily going very like looking at it in a lot of depth, you might miss those implications. Um, and if but if you do a Google search for that organization's name, a Wikipedia article comes up um, and several other like news articles and other organization articles come up that say, hey, be on the lookout for the fact that they have this very specific perspective that's going to impact um, how they, uh, present information. Um, and so you can do a very, very quick activity, um, which I think we can do in one minute here. This is very stripped down. I've done this with a lot of audiences. I've done this in classes. Um, I'm doing this with you now. And I also did this recently with a group of like um, advancement and development professionals at UNCG. So I have used it pretty widely. And it is like just dipping your toe into lateral reading. So I'm not going to make y'all go to this link. I'm just going to pull it up and I'm going to show you um, an article that has come. Oh, thanks, Sam. That was great. Um, that has come from FAIR. And I will put in the chat what that stands for. Um, so what I'm going to ask you to do is uh, just very quickly do a Google search for FAIR or the Federation. Well, probably FAIR is not going to be super helpful. That's why I put the what it stands for, Federation of American Immigration Reform. Um, if you do a quick Google search for that and then paste anything into the chat that is about that organization that does not come from that organization. So something that's not from fairus.org, um, but tells us about it. Sam's right on top of it with Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a fantastic uh, tool for lateral reading. Um, Anna also found one. So it, it tells us right away, nonprofit anti-immigration organization. And one of the nice things about Wikipedia, you know, we, we tend to uh, say, say, say less than positive things about Wikipedia, but they do a great job of citing their sources. Um, Yes, so both Paige and Anna brought up the Southern Poverty Law Center. This is another one where if you have an organization that is considered extremist in its views or in any way sort of uh, considered to be kind of a hate a hate group, they, they do a lot of hate watch. That's one of their, you see it on their site there. Um, this comes up a lot. There's also, um, let me see if it shows up for me. Um, you can also often find information from things like uh, GuideStar, which is for nonprofit or about nonprofits, um, Ballotopedia, which is a good sort of election resource. Uh, and there are other ones too that come up, but you can do this lateral reading um, and you can learn uh, right off the bat before you even go further. And, and based on what you see here, you might say, 
huh, maybe I don't even really need to read this report because I already know that it's going to have such a slanted perspective. Now, you could still read it, could still be useful depending on your sort of context, um, but it's something ultimately lateral reading is, is for saving time and also for helping you right off the bat identify sites that could be problematic based on things like their bias or their funding or an extremist agenda. All right, so we are over time. Sorry about that. I should have known. Um, one of the, I, I asked this question, and this is just something I'll suggest that you think about a little bit. Um, but I think there are actually a lot of other ways that we can use this beyond source evaluation. One of the ways I know Anna, who is here, does a lot of work with helping people identify. Um, uh, journals that I don't know if the term predatory journals is like still what's being used, but identifying journals that might be problematic or journals that might be of a lower quality that things like that. Lateral reading is a great strategy there um, because you can read about what other people have said about this particular organization. For both Paige and Sam working so much with health sciences, I think you can use this strategy a lot when looking at consumer health information online, figuring out, okay, does this organization have a particular perspective about health that I need to know before I kind of go into vertically reading the information. So it's not a replacement for vertical reading, but I would encourage you to do lateral reading first. Um, and as promised, and I'll paste these into the chat, and I think Sam will also send them out um, when she sends out the recording, um, but I've got two links here, the slides go.uncg.edu slash lateral webinar. And then I also have a list of lateral reading resources that I'm gonna open up here and just show you. I have places to do lateral reading, Google, Wikipedia, a couple of fact checking website examples, and then a source called All Sides, which I need to actually link there. Um, some videos, including the one, uh, the one I showed the clip from that I definitely recommend. Um, and then a few other video sources, and then some readings, including that OER textbook I mentioned, um, and that preprint from Sam Weinberg and Sarah McGrew about lateral reading. So this is available as well. Um, and uh, yes, that's it. I'm only three minutes over. That's pretty good for me. I usually run out of time. So I'm going to put my email address in this um, chat. If you have questions now, I'm happy to stay and answer them. I don't have anything scheduled um, right now. And um, if you have questions later, please feel free to email me, um, especially if you want to talk about like, how could we, how could I integrate this into a class? Um, like I said, I've done it with a pretty wide variety of disciplines. I've also done it with um, the Civic Engagement Academy, which is run by uh, the Office of Leadership and Civic Engagement on campus for students who are really interested in sort of being very engaged citizens. Um, I have done this with, uh, like I said earlier, development officers. Um, so a really wide range of groups. And I think that you can do it a lot of different ways. I just chose a, a slightly longer and a much shorter one um, for today because of our time frame. So thank you all so much for coming. Thanks for participating. Um, you're all excellent students. Great work. So this is Sam. Um, just as we're wrapping up, um, uh, I put a lot of links in chat. There's an assessment form to let us know how this went, um, as well as um, next week, we'll be doing just one online learning and innovation webinar on um, Panopto and Zoom. So uh, there's going to be an ITS announcement, uh, hopefully today, that um, Zoom recordings will be cycled out around 30 days, which means you'll need to set up um, Zoom with Panopto for course lectures, right? Especially since the semester is uh, longer than 30 days. For librarians and um, people not teaching courses, but using Zoom to do recordings like this webinar, um, you'll need to be sure to get your recordings out and put it somewhere safe. Um, we recommend Box in terms of uh, the most secure storage uh, for that. So uh, keep that in mind. But if you wanna learn more about that and how to set it up with Panopto, um, Audrey Brickley in ITS is gonna be doing that um, next week, Tuesday. Uh, uh, again, if you're even interested in learning about it, you will receive the recording if you sign up for it and can't come to the live session. Um, we will also be uh, putting it on the, I think, overall UNCG ITS webpage. And when you get the ITS announcement today about uh, Panopto and Zoom, you will probably see a link
link to this webinar as well um, to sign up. Uh, so again, it's a it's a good opportunity. So because of how, what everything that's going on in the pandemic, that series with online learning and innovation is going to be really more like as things come up. Uh, so be sure to talk to your liaison or email me or keep checking that website, uh, the webinars page that I've sent periodically throughout the chat. Um, and then we do have a lot of research and application series coming up, a um, um, couple with uh, Anna, who's here, on um, open access publishing, uh, how to know whether you're publishing a quality journal, as well as um, stuff on student data um, in ICPSR, or student data like modules in ICPSR, I think I'm saying that right, uh, by our data visualization and librarian, uh, Joe Klein, as well as something on Dimensions AI, which is kind of science, health science based uh, resource. So uh, again, if you're interested in that, um, as well as um, one on legal research, I'm probably missing one, but there's a lot of good stuff. So check that out and sign up. Um, they are available for any grad student um, or um, instructor at UNCG undergraduates are welcome to come, but we just consider them kind of more like digging deep into these like pretty uh, advanced series of research. Um, so keep that in mind if you recommend it for your undergraduates. Um, so sorry that we went a little long, but uh, definitely email us if you have any questions. Uh, some people in here are, I know are in my departments. Um, I'm happy to work with Jenny on lateral reading activities. Um, Jenny and I work together all the time. Uh, so uh, just let us know. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you all for coming. Okay, Jenny, I'm going to just uh, end the recording. And thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Bye. Oh, wait, I guess you're the main host. So you have to. End. Oh, I'll close it. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs>